Yes, well, what a week it has been. State of origin now done and dusted. New South Wales licking their wounds as Queensland. They celebrate that victory. Joey, good to see you. We've had a few days since. Still burning. Still burning. Still broken inside. Talk, talk to us about, we saw um, just post-game, just how emotional you were. Mm. And, and I think it has it, it has divided opinion. There are some people who were sitting at home and felt exactly the way that you would have felt mm. and appreciated the fact that you said it how well, it was. What, what do they want me to get on and just talk vanilla? If they want me to say what I... I, I probably didn't articulate it enough because mm. I was so broken inside, but that's how I feel. I feel broken inside. It means that much to me. And all I ever wanted to do since I played, started playing footy was one, play for the Knights, and two, represent my state. The blue jersey means everything to me. And I find it insulting and a kick in the guts when they talk about their jersey means more to them. It, it gets me so emotional. And I'd love to get them. All the halfbacks who have played for Queensland. You know, Cherry Evans, does your jersey mean more than my jersey? And I know what the answer is, no. It's all, and I said in the night, it's bullshit. It's all bullshit. Where, where, was, where was this, it means more to them in Perth in the second half when we put on 30 points? And I can show clips of guys walking when they're tired mm. for Queensland, which is a sign that, does their jersey mean more to us when they're walking and they're running past and scoring? It's a myth. And, and for people to say it, it is insulting to anyone who has bled and got injured and done everything they can for the New South Wales jersey when they're playing. And usually it's, 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 it doesn't come from the players and ex-players. And look, the last couple of days I've spoke, spoken to some of the guys I used to play against, you know, Gordon and Wendell and these guys. It doesn't come from them. It comes from people outside it who have no idea, have never been on the battlefield of origin, would never survive out there, but they push this narrative, which is just total BS. Just drives me mad. And does it feel when people suggest that, put those suggestions out there, that the Queensland jersey means more to the Maroons, that it's insulting not just for the current teams, but, you know, you oh, spoke right. about every right. single player Everyone. that's ever pulled on the Blues jersey. And I can jersey. mention players who I'm close to. Ben Kennedy, he would eat their throat to win. Paul Harrigan, the depths he used to take himself, leading into Origin, but then playing Origin, what he would do to win. Denny Vadiris, you know, the great mate. The things he, the, the, the dark places I've seen him go on the field and how busted he was and just keep playing as an insult to them all. And, you know, it just comes from people who have no idea. Mm. They have no idea. They think they know what it is, but they have no idea. No idea what it takes to get out there, firstly, and earn a jersey, but then to get out there on the battlefield and win. If it meant more, why don't they win every series? And I think it goes where was to the show... last? Where was the other year in Townsville when New South Wales won by 50? It's just, it just gets tossed up when it suits them. And once again, it doesn't come from the players. And my BS wasn't directed at Fatty or Cameron. And the, it's, it's just the last three days, that's all I've heard. They didn't talk about you know, the great kicking game or the defensive scramble of Queensland. It's all about this narrative of it means more, which we should be talking about their game plan and the incredible kicking game in the second half. And look, I thought they were the better team on the night. They deserved to win. And in the second half, the, the way they defended, their kicking game was far superior. The, the early kicks and the way they defended that 16-12 lead, it was heroic. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about something that doesn't exist, which is a myth. That's why it pisses me off. Well, I think this is just these few minutes alone shows just how much it actually does mean because you think and about I could, look, how I many years on. I couldn't articulate mm. after, after the game because I was, it's hard to describe how it breaks me inside. Mm. And then to, to constantly hear this it means more, it's, it's so insulting. Mm. And hopefully it drives the player. I know it used to drive me. It used to drive me when I was a kid, watching the king do his stuff. You know, they talk about that generation when Wally and all those boys come through, how watching New South Wales smash Queensland year after year. Well, you know what? I grew up watching the King. Mm. And it used to drive me crazy. And then I got my opportunity, and I like to think that I did my best for my state and my jersey. But if the people say it meant more to the players I played against, it's just an insult on anyone who's played the jersey. It's, it's an insult on how hard they go and what's deep inside here. Deep inside here. So, there it is.
there it is. Yeah, Feel no, that's fair now. enough. You've you got it off your chest. All right, well, I wish I would just could have articulated. But it's better. hard when the you night, when you're it's an emo, it's an emotional experience. You, it's just happened, and you know you've got mm. all these things running through you. It, mm. it is hard to mm. put it into words, um, and especially considering the environment as well that you're in. You've got you're surrounded Screen. by Queensland fans Same. who can. Same awful thing. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. Um, all right, well, let's talk about the game. What did you What did you make of the game overall? Oh, it was incredible game. It's one of the great games of origin. You know, people say it's the best of all time. I don't think you could say that because over the years there's been some unbelievable games. But it, it'd be up there in the top five, I think. And i got to say, Queensland deserved their win. Their second half, the heroics in the second half, um, where they kicked early and they chased and they just gave New South Wales no field position and they just chewed all the petrol out of New South Wales tanks. Um, thought New South Wales probably could have scored more tries in the first half when they had that ascendancy. And I think the try on half time, um, the try by uh, the back rower. Just before Kate, 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 Kate Will. Kate, uh, Kate, Kate Will, I thought that. Kurt Kate yeah, Will, and that, ch that changed. That you changed felt that moment changed moment momentum. Where Queensland went at half time with their tails up instead of being down, should have been down by a few more tries. I don't think we banked enough points during that time when. We had full position and momentum. Because mm, we New South Wales led by two points going into mm. the half time. So, but if you ever look at the full position we had and how much mm. momentum, I, I thought we should have been up by, you know, at least two or three tries. Talk but about they deserved the win. There's no doubt about it. That they played the second half, especially they played Origin footy better. That first five, ten minutes mm. of the game, have you seen a more intense or more dramatic start, I mm. think it was? Trying to think. Not for a long, long time. Um, that was the good old-fashioned softening up period. It had everything. Mm. And uh, it just goes to show, it's, to play at this level, you have to be a special sort of player and person to do it. The, the way they're putting their body on the line and some of the, the impacts and the hits... It, uh, it's not for everyone, it's, and that's why there's only a small group of players in the NRL can play at that level consistently. It was, uh, yeah, it was incredible. Um, Gus was speaking on, the, on his podcast this week, mm. uh, Six Tackles with Gus, saying that he went into the blue sheds before the game and he said it was very quiet in there. It felt really eerie. Did you go in there beforehand? No, I didn't go in or D after. Is, did you, did you not go in after? Or? It's a crime. I thought you would have popped. <laughs> no, I just was too shattered. Too so, shattered. I didn't want to be in there bawling my eyes out. <laughs> so what did you do after? After the game? After the game. Well, I said my piece on TV, which I'm sure I've been hammered about. And then speaking of hammered, pretty <laughs> much the same sort of thing after. <laughs> Drowning sorrows, I think that's what it's... Yeah. Um, there wasn't enough beer in Brisbane for me to drown my sorrows. <laughs> anyway... Um, well, Four we, months of it. We spoke at the yeah. Well, we spoke at the top of the show about the criticism, and there was some quotes in the media this week. There was a lot of discussion about Origin, and there was one quote this week talking about um, the passion that the Queensland players have because they play for their state, and they were bringing into question certain players and their heritage and cultures. For example, Jerome Luai, who uh, won't be playing for. Australia at the end of the year because he's um, saying that he you know wants to play for so his Josh country. So Josh Papali's going to play for Samoa. Josh Papali, Papali. sorry Josh, but uh, does that question? Do you think New South, South Wales put gets in a New South Wales unfairly series? targeted? Yeah. I mean, where, where were these comments after game two? Mm. I didn't hear any of these comments. No one questioned Queensland's you know their their heart or what they do for their state after game two. I didn't hear any of it. Absolutely, but then after game three, when they deserved to win, I thought they played great. They played, as I've already said, they played really tough. They just hem in New South Wales. Sick of it. Um, well, looking ahead to 2023 series, mm. do you think there'll be many changes that the Blues would make? Well, two of our superstars didn't play in Tom Trebrojevic and Latrell Mitchell. Mm. Um, if they're fit and firing, you think, uh, and if Tedesco's fit, that is, that they would be. Starting centres. Um, I'm just trying to think. I, you know, the Josh um, Jack White will probably obviously come back in. He's an Origin player, but I can understand why Freddie didn't play him in, in Game Three. I'd be the same as Freddie. Is that not changing a winning team? 
not changing a winning team, and it would have been hard for him to, to get in there. Yeah. Um, you know, it's easy to look back now and think, you know, we could have used Jack off the bench or even, you know, here or there. It's understandable. He's an Origin player. But uh, probably the big ones would be the centres, and obviously Phil for Matt Burton there and Steve Crichton. They're both very young players. Yeah. There's a lot of young guys making their Origin sort of start of their career. But those two are the big ones, Turbo and Luttrell. Um, to six? No, I don't... Th well, I don't know. It's a, there's a lot of footy to be played. Um, yeah, Would you I'd, keep the halves the same? I'd keep the halves the same, yeah. I'd just keep the key positions the same. Tedesco, the two dummy halves. Just got to remember, there was no full position in the second half. Every, every time New South Wales got the ball... It was inside their 20. I think there was only a couple of tackles New South Wales had inside Queensland's 30. And there were some big errors at key time. There was four really glaring errors in the, l the last five minutes of the first half and the, and the second half. Mm. And each error... Led to Queensland, ...amplifies yeah. the error. Mm. But Queensland were good enough to capitalise on it. But we've got to remember, the game was in the balance with three minutes to go. Mm. With all that field position, you know, we're not talking about how great New South Wales defended their line for the whole forty minutes. Oh, that was incredible! Minutes. It was incredible. Was, mm. It was incredible. With all that field position and possession, and that happened to New South Wales in game two. They got a possession and field position in game two. They put on thirty points in the second half. Mm, but you just felt New South Wales defence. They were just they, they just, just kept in. on they just holding on, in. holding they on. They hung in. They hung in. They worked for each other. But we're not talking about this. And you know what? We're not even talking about the gate the great game plan in the second half for Queensland of kicking early and turning them around. We're talking about something that doesn't exist. Hey, and we're talking about it here yes, on yes, yes. Immortal Behaviour. Full credit, full credit to Ben Hunt with his kicking game, the 40-20. Daly Chervin's kicking yeah. game was absolutely yeah. amazing. Kicking on like third... Second, yeah, second, second tackle yeah. on stage. And they tackled their way. They protected that four-point lead and just... Tore in, tore in, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about something. Anyway, you know how I feel. We do. So, obviously, State of Origin every year goes, mm. um, it has quite an influence on uh, the Australian team that is yeah. selected. So, who are your absolute uh, lock ins for the Kangaroos? I think Tedesco, mm. without a doubt. Uh, Munster, if he's over the COVID. Who would you have alongside Munster in the halves? I don't know. I think a lot of it leading into the, the end. I, before game three, I had Nathan, but then the way Cherry Evans played in that third game, I think they're really neck and neck. Um, who else? A quick note. Valentine Holmes. I think mm. he'll be a starting centre on the left side, depending on, obviously, um, Luttrell and what happens with South in the, the semis. But Val Holmes deserves a starting spot. Patrick Carrigan will debut and will be there for you know, 10 years. He was, he was great. And I've he said was, publicly, mm. I think he will be maybe the next Queensland captain. And then further on, I think you'll captain Australia, his qualities. Um, Isaiah Yo at lock, you know, Payne Haas, Junior Paulo. Have they committed to Australia? I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. Mm. I think we'll start to work. If we'll start to find out who's Big Tino. I think he'll be on the bench there somewhere. Where also Tino has his uh, Samoan. Well, I don't know whether they've pledged. So the only ones during Origin who have pledged their allegiance to, would you call the motherland? Is that or their, uh, their heritage? heritage? Their heritage. heritage. So Brian, was Brian Toe, Toe and Jerome. And Jerome, yeah. which I think they which, should be applauded and for. I it. couldn't. I couldn't believe the criticism that they copped for it. So be, well, Josh Papa, uh, Papalihi. Yep. He's I'm pretty sure he's committed to some uh, anything there. Well, I will, no. I, I, I'm not sure whether he has. So this is the thing. Uh, many of yeah. them would have. Uh, mm. They would have made that decision, but it's until someone mm. asks them. And and I think it's great for international football. That they want to. You play. want to have the best. You want to be pushing each other. You want to have games mm. where you've got the best players in. Uh, and if 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 they see himself more Samoan or Tongan, or Fijian, then I think represent where your family's from. If mm. you feel that way, and even though you're raised in New South Wales, or you're yeah. raised in Queensland... Because sometimes it's not even origin. about necessarily the player. They, they do it for their families. If well, we, we know yeah. the Pacific Island boys, the family is everything. Mm. Mm. So if the uncles and parents and grandparents, brothers, sisters are saying, you know, we'd like you to play, 
you can totally understand it. Mm. Totally understand it. So I think it's good for the game. It's good for international footy, and we are heading for a great World Cup. Can't wait for it. I don't think any, anyone else. There's Junior, there's... I don't know about the Safiti boys, whether they've committed to Fiji or not. Um, and Jacob Safiti, what an origin to do that Yes. One. At half time, 17 minutes, he near ran for 100 metres. 97 metres, he ran in 17 minutes. Some good hits, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, well, it's now. It's just the best. It's the best yeah. footy. It uh, honestly, tests, uh, tests everyone. And, you know. every, and that's the thing Origin, it's such a spectacle. Yeah. It was what, over 3 million people tuned in I to had a friend, watch it. I had a friend who coached me. He coached me at Warrington when I went over there, Paul Cullen. Mm. And he texted me after the game and he said, I don't know what that game you play in Australia is, but. He said, it's rugby league on a whole nother universe. Mm. And I saw Eddie Jones' comments. Eddie Jones is coaching at the moment English Rugby Union. And it's, just, it's just on a whole nother stratosphere where they take themselves. All the players, it's just, it's just amazing. And, and you know I, what? They back up and play this weekend I for know, their club. I know. Superhuman. It's, and I love the fact that it's, it's watched around the world. Mm. Or you had people who were sending messages saying, oh yeah, we're tuned in from England, we're tuned in mm. from you know, Indonesia, we're tuned in from... I took a, a, an old game on a surfing trip with these guys I know from America are on the boat. So one night I had a few drinks and I said, put it on. So I put it on. They were like, you know the one with Mick DeVille? Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're going, what? You guys are steeping each other's heads on the field? Could you ever see an Origin game getting played in the US or do you think that would take away from, I, from I, it? I just think it should be played in Sydney and Brisbane. Yeah. That's for me. I know they're taking it on the road and, you know, with the thought of expanding the game and showing our, our showcase and I can totally understand it uh, and I think if they did it the right way and look, there's some, pl uh, there's some people involved in the show business uh, game over in America, Hugh Jackman, you know, Russell Crowe, these sort of guys, who could promote it, mm. get eyes on it. But it's hard. If you don't grow up with a sport, it's but like... I, but I feel like in, in the States, you know, uh, they, love a, they love a big sporting event. Mm. Can you imagine one of those brand new stadiums, the... Um, the one in Vegas, the, is it the Raiders one? No, 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 no Vegas stories. Vegas. But imagine a stadium like that packed yeah. out the state of origin. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be amazing. Mm. But you'd have to have a... But do you think... You'd have to have a short Okay, we play in front of 50,000. Do you think 50,000 of them are continually going to watch Origin mm. years mm. to come? Yeah. Do you think their yeah. kids are going to play league? Probably not. No. For me, keep it in Sydney and Brisbane. All right. Um, all right, well, now that the um, that's all done and dusted, looking towards the NRL, the <sighs> final... <laughs> Um, yep. They're fast approaching. So are there any teams that are um, currently outside the top eight that mm. you think will finish in the top eight that can oh outside, outside I the think top the roosters eight. are a big chance I so we've got the dragons one. roosters raiders knights warriors bulldogs titans and tigers outside uh, the top eight and look out of that lot it's really probably the roosters in a fair income sort of yep. apartment uh the rest maybe the dragons the raiders i'd love to say my knights and but anyone outside of it, other than the Roosters, have to be 100% and have no injuries. Although, Manly could be on shaky ground. Um, but you pretty much look at it, Penrith are anywhere near fully fit. So, hard to at bear. the moment, yeah, so Penrith are on 32 mm. points. The Cowboys are in second on 26 points. That's pretty incredible, that gap up there. Well, the top four, the Storm at the moment, have way too many injuries, yep. especially to their outside backs. They're missing centres and wingers. Mm. Um, some injuries in other key areas also. And also the origin I, period I, as I, well. I just can't see them beating Penrith with how many injuries they've got. The Cowboys and the Sharks, for the Cowboys and Sharks to beat Penrith, they would have to be their very best, and I think Penrith might have to be down a little. So there's question marks over that. And then outside the top four, the only team I could see winning the comp from out there would be South Sydney. Who, who I don't see the Broncos, or the, I think the Broncos are building. I think there's a premiership there in the next few years, without a doubt. The Earls, for me, are too inconsistent. The Bunnies, if they catch fire, and you know I'm talking about. Luttrell. Cody and Luttrell. Mm. You know what they can do with the magic them two have got. I think they're the only team outside of the Cowboys and the Sharks who could trouble Penrith. Who who could you see beating Penrith more, Cowboys or Sharks? 
I think pretty much even. Even? Develop print, yeah, I think pretty much even. For both of them, it would have to be fully fit and have to play to their 100% maximum ability mm. and probably Penrith a little bit down um we also but injuries you know, injuries you never know injuries, what can happen they played a lot of footy the Penrith boys but if they're anywhere near fully fit they just win um and also some big news this week for the Tigers they've announced mm. their coaching plan mm. so five years it's a five-year coaching plan so Tim Sheens he's head coach for the first two years with Benji and Robbie as his assistants and then Benji will take over Benji and Robbie or just no Benji? just Benj I think it's a great idea. I, I, actually, I saw that Tim Sheens has committed. I didn't know that, that but sensational. And it means something to Benji. Mm. You know, that he, even though he played for other clubs, he's a Tiger. Won premierships there, won huge games. And he's a smart bloke, Benji. He knows his footy. And then him and Robbie working together. You know, one's a back, one's a, a forward. Um, but... They know what they're going to, they're going to build from within. They, and they're someone who can inspire the next generation of juniors from the Tigers juniors, which mm. is pretty much that southwestern corridor mm. um, out around Campbelltown and that those players coming through. And they'll know the ones that keep. Mm. They'll know. And, and when you inspire. think about the Tigers, you think about, you know, you think about Benji. Benji. And Robbie. And, and Robbie, they, yeah. yeah. No, what they did in 2005. Mm. But... Um, yeah, well done to the Tigers. Hopefully they get that stability. Hopefully, hopefully they can identify those best young players because, look, the last 10 years, spoke about it. Tedesco, Moses, you know, these sort of players. Well, because I think that has... Andrew, yeah, Fafina, and we did we have seen them the last Adam few weeks it changing Woods. a little bit. We've seen a number of players debut. Mm. There's a, they a couple, of young, couple of young guys. A couple of young guys last week were mm. really good. Really, really mm. impressive. So... Um, yeah, like it's a sensation. And, and Benji was speaking about um, the appointment, and he was saying that in in the last few years of his career, he actually felt like he was taking on a, more of a coaching role while he was still playing because he was. Remind me, did he finish up at the Tigers? So he was. At, he left the Tigers and went to Souths. Yeah. Um, and when he was at Souths, he was he was helping a lot of the. Yeah, well, I've heard he was really mm, smart and mm. liked to mentor the younger players and, and the halves. And look, he, he Benji changed the game. And he inspired a generation of young players to come through. And you know, I used to see it years ago. Junior footy kids would be jumping around like Benji, mm. but no one could jump like Benji. No one could be. Just, what was that Winnie the Pooh or Tigger? Oh, just, Tigger. <laughs> I like Benji. The five years though. Do you like a long? I like a long, it. I like the like stability. Yeah. Mm. And Tim Sheens can be there, but you know, I think the fingerprints all over it will be Benji and Robbie. I think it's absolutely sensational. Mm. Appointment. So good luck to the Tigers. Yep. Good luck. It's a uh, it's a tough job. I coaching. feel like I've been on a uh, one of those lounges pouring out my heart. Do you feel better now? Do you feel you've got it off your chest? Nope. <laughs> so no, there's. No. Are we going to get more to come on Sunday Footy Show this weekend? Oh, I haven't really thought about it. I thought <laughs> by then, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I thought that'd be gone, but no. <laughs> That's why I said we've got 12 months of this BS. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm make sorry, sure. Quint. I'm sorry, Queensland people, that you know where I'm coming from. Yeah. Understand, it's a passion. okay, just reverse it the other way. Reverse it the other way, where someone from New South Wales was saying Queensland jersey means nothing. Yeah. And it hit hard. Yeah. And it hit you. You throw your four yeah. X and your rum at the TV. <laughs> All right. Anyway, Enjoy. I just want to say congratulations. You played well, great in the third game, and you deserve the victory. All right. There you are. Well said. All right, that is all we have time for for Immortal Behaviour for this week. Enjoy the footy, and we'll see you again next week.